Deep Learning Applications by Simply Learn. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. In today's exciting world of AI, artificial intelligence, we're going to cover some of the many uses it's being applied to healthcare, entertainment, composing music, image coloring, robotics, image captioning. Advertising Earthquake Prediction. And there's many more. It's just an exciting time to be in the field of AI and deep learning and artificial intelligence. Now, all these fields are just booming. It's just amazing what's going on. So let's take a quick glance at some of the things going on and we'll start with our healthcare. When we take a look at healthcare, deep learning is reshaping healthcare industry by delivering new possibilities to improve people's lives. And we have computer-aided disease detection. I know a number of startups have come up where they're working on, you take a picture, like if you have some kind of um, irritation or rash, and they use that, or even you know some infection in the eye, and they use the deep learning to help identify what it is. Hey, this is 99.99% um, nothing, don't worry about it. Or this is 93% chance, um, and usually it doesn't come out 93% chance if you do deep learning, but it says, hey, you know, you should probably take this into the doctor, you know, <laughs> have them take a look at it and see what it is. These are the things it could be. Analyzing genomes, that's a big one, very um, controversial nowadays with all the different genome editing and options they have and things they're doing, but deep learning is definitely diving into the genome projects. We have discovering new drugs, and um, this, there's so many directions for new drugs going on. It's like one of the booming industries especially in the U.S., but all across the world. And they range from uh, exploring different plants and um, the opening up of, let's say, marijuana in the U.S. and a number of cities are exploring that for medical use, to how do you reprogram T cells in the human body to combat disease. And there's whole industries in data analysis. Another one is chemistry. How do you use a chemical cell or a chemistry um, molecule, not cell, a chemical molecule to imitate the T cell? So you can then put those molecules in there and then they grab the disease cells out or the cancer cells or whatever out just like the human body would. So discovering new drugs and how to apply that is just a huge industry. All these are huge industries. And medical imaging. We'll even take a glance closer at that but being able to analyze, you know, you get your MRI, you get your CAT scans. The doctors can spend a long time looking at those and taking careful measurements and most of that's done by hand but as we start applying deep learning, the deep learning can do a lot of that work not only do it the same, but it'll be uniform from one hospital to the next, meaning that as a industry, it continues to progress and you get better results and better services. So deep learning is reshaping healthcare industry by delivering new possibilities to improve people's life. And deep learning helps in early detection of cancer cells and tumors, improves the time-consuming process of synthesizing new drugs, and inverts sophisticated medical instruments. And not even sophisticated. They're using iPhones and deep learning to help with medical diagnosis. Uh, so it's at all levels. It's just amazing what they're doing in the healthcare industry with deep learning. And they've just barely tapped what there's possible. They're just now evolving into the beginning of this where it's exploding out there. So entertainment. Uh, that's always a fun one. A lot of people go into the entertainment and deep learning because it's just fun. You know, what's my favorite movie? Um, all that fun stuff. Deep learning is used in the entertainment industry such as Netflix, Amazon, and filmmaking. And you have like your recommendations. That's probably the most common one you see. And you can see here where they have uh, India transform the true story, the third pillar, now markets and the state leave. So it comes up and says, hey, this is based on whoever. Um, and of course, this is showing up on Amazon or Amazon Prime. Netflix does a good job of grouping movies for you and says since you like these movies you might like these movies over here same thing with vivo it does that also amazon netflix and vivo use recommender systems to provide personalized experience to its viewers using their show preferences time of access history etc so really this is one of the cool things is instead of having to dig for the information deep learning starts doing that for you so instead of spending hours trying to figure out what you want to watch you can actually just enjoy the movies and have them come up Deep learning is used in the entertainment industry, such as Netflix, Amazon, and filmmaking. Continue on in deep learning, we have things like the IBM Watson. This is just really cool. I didn't know this till I read this, till we did this slide. Wimbledon 2018 used IBM Watson to analyze player emotions and expressions through hundreds of hours of footage. And then it auto-generated highlights for the telecast. So you can imagine somebody sitting there looking through all the boring stuff. I want to look at the interesting stuff. 
it helps us sort that out. Again, you know, just like the Netflix and referral, it helps you find your choices without having to do all the heavy work of digging through really bad B-rated movies. And music and audio generation, um, another huge part of the industry, and this kind of blends right in with video and movie making. Voice and audio recognition technology can be used to train deep learning network to produce music compositions. So it learns the patterns and generates new music. Google's WaveNet and Beidou's Deep Speech can train a computer to learn the patterns and the statistics that are unique to the music. It can then generate a complete new composition. That's a little scary. I always thought that uh, creativity would always be the human factor that we'd always have our creativity but you know computers can do some of that too and then we have our reads lip movements um, oxford and google scientists created a neural network called lipnet that could read people's lips with 93 percent success this can be used to add sounds to silent movies i like that it'd be fun to hear what they actually were saying back there they probably said something totally different than what's actually on the movie that'd be pretty funny on the scary note this would allow surveillance equipment to pull what people are saying even if they're really far away as long as they can see the lips that's a little scary. Coloring images and videos. Deep learning can be used to color images and videos by taking the objects and their context within the photograph. So you have your black and white image is fed in and you have a convolutional neural network is used to learn the patterns and usually you train it. You train it with hundreds of black and white photos that you already have the color image for so you know what to expect. And you take the new one and it recreates the image by adding the colors. And this is also used in the movie industry to add in special effects. Um, there's all kinds of cool things they can do with this. It goes way beyond just coloring pictures. Of course, the coloring pictures is something that you can probably do in your own lab on your own computer and build your own uh, neural network to do that. Robotics, one of my favorites. Uh, robotics, all these tools that make them so exciting is that you can go out and uh, even now, it used to be you'd have to spend four, five, six, ten thousand US dollars to buy your own robot and then start programming it and doing neural networks. Now it's around two thousand dollars and that continues to plummet. Uh, there's even kid robots much cheaper, uh, robotic hands, all of that that you can purchase and generate your own neural network and start trying to figure out how to get it to do things. And so when we talk about deep learning, it's heavily used these days in building robots to perform human-like tasks. Robots are built to understand the world around them. Very important how to uh, figure out what's what. I remember if you go back uh, 20 years, they could not get a robot to figure out the difference between a Coke can and a pencil because they're both cylinders. And it just, they just had no idea how to do that back then. You know, they did the beginning of robotics, really the neural networks it was mid 90s where it started really taking off and the theory started coming in. And so you go back to that time and, and figuring out those differences was almost impossible before then. And they trained to make better and safer decisions without supervision uh, and you can see in this case you know in outer space having a robot up there uh, you know if the window blows out air pressure is lost the robot is you know not going to be hurt by it because they don't need air and oxygen and their decisions usually instead of being like a human's tired in this case the robot never is tired so you know there's definitely a lot of tasks for a robot that can be used to replace humans it would be safer think uh, nuclear reactors that melted down after the tsunami in Japan using robotics to go in there and clean up would be really important instead of putting a person in a hazmat suit that might or might not protect him from the radiation. In Boston Dynamics, we have uh, Spot Mini. He's fun to watch if you ever pull up the video or the Atlas. Robots by Boston Dynamics react to people pushing them around, get up when they fall, can unload a dishwasher, and do other tasks as well. So we're starting to see this kind of robotics coming into the house. The Atlas obviously is a very expensive uh, robot, but there is certainly more common ones you can actually bring into the house and then spot mini is fun to watch run you can I, I forget how fast he goes but he goes pretty fast image caption generation another in, part of the industry in deep learning deep learning is used to display the contents of an image i love this with my google photos the system is trained with very large convolutional neural networks for detecting objects in the photographs and then a recurring neural network like an lstm is used to turn the labels into coherent sentence dog catching a ball so this is awesome this is like you go into your google photos and you say, hey, I want all the pictures of my dog, or I want all the pictures of uh, kids, or whatever it is. And they're getting to the point where you can now do, I want pictures where my dog is catching the ball. Advertising. One of the better paid fields in AI is in marketing and advertising, especially if you are working on bonuses and commission. So advertising. An advertising deep learning allows optimizing a user's experience. So deep learning helps 
publishers and advertisers to increase the relevancy of the ads and boost the advertising campaigns. Allows a network to reduce costs by dropping the cost per acquisition of a campaign from $60 to $30. Create data-driven predictive advertising, real-time bidding of their ads, and target display advertising. And again, this goes uh, from experimental where I'm just going to guess what people want. And we'll put out a pink sign that says... Um, you want to add on widget to your order. Well, nobody wants widgets and nobody wants to see the pink sign. Maybe you got three people who want to see the pink sign. And you find out that the blue sign, a lot of people are reading that, and they really want a widget number two, whatever that is. Uh, so when you talk about advertising, it also deals with marketing and also uh, preference of merchandise. So it becomes really huge as far as what you're advertising and generating profit and sales for a company. And that's across the board, whether you're talking big real estate or uh, property management and rentals or uh, Amazon uses this for all their merchandise coming out of their warehouses. Any of those are generated from the AI generates more sales. And that's the bottom dollar. Business is always looking at the bottom dollar. Where can I make money on this? Uh, earthquake prediction. So now we're getting to something uh, safety, human safety. Um, you can also think weather predictions, all those fun things. Deep learning model can be used to predict earthquakes by considering a factor called von Mises yield criterion. Scientists at Harvard use deep learning to teach a computer to perform viscoelastic computations that is quite the mouthful, which are used in prediction of earthquakes. This application helped to improve the earthquake calculation by 50,000%. That's amazing. We went from just guessing when an earthquake's going to happen, where we have almost no reliability to being able to have a, a decent guess as when the earthquakes are going to hit. That's pretty impressive. So that was a brief tour of all the cool things going on in AI. Definitely don't let those stop your imagination from thinking about what other tools can be used with AI to generate. But you can also look at these as major ones if you're looking for work and you're saying, hey, what do I enjoy doing? Do I want to go into entertainment? Do I want to work in the medical industry, which is very lucrative? Entertainment can be lucrative, but it's, it's very hard to get to that level. Robotics. Robotics is exploding. No one knows where it's going to go. I was just reading an article on mini TensorFlow for embedding deep learning models once you've taught them onto a cheap processor. So now you can use that to do some very basic, simple things. Wherever you go with your understanding of deep learning in the AI field, I want to thank you for joining us today, and I wish you lots of luck. For more information, visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified. Get ahead. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.